Hello everyone, hope you are all doing well. In this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code weekly contest 315. It's a hard level problem. The problem name is count subarrays with fixed bounds. So uh, you are given an integer array nums and two integers min k and max k. A fixed bound subarray of nums is a subarray that satisfies the following condition. The minimum value in the subarray is equals to min k. And the maximum value in the subarray equals to max k. Now, what we need to do is we need to return the number of fixed bound subarrays. And a subarray is obviously a contiguous part of an array, right? Let me just fetch the solution as well. And let me just explain you what the problem is saying. So the problem says that you are given an array. Let's call it nums, okay? And then you are given a min k and a max k. Right. So what you need to do, you need to find all the sub arrays of nums in which the minimum value, the minimum value of an element is min k and the maximum value in that particular sub array is max k. Right. Let me just take an example. So the first example is 1, 3, 5, 2, 7, 5. Right. And in this case, min k equals to 1 max k equals to 5 so just see what are the sub arrays uh, one sub array could be this 3 right 1 3 5 what could be another sub array mm, another sub array could be this one 1 3 5 and 2 1 3 5 and 2 can you take 7 as well no you cannot take right because 7 is larger than max k right and obviously you can't just take this 5 because you also need this condition that min k is also present there right let me take the second example so that one is 1 comma 1 comma 1 comma 1 right so here and min k equals to max k equals to 1 so here you can see whatever sub array you form from this uh, array all of them are valid and what are the number of sub arrays that you can form that will be number of elements for into so n into n plus 1 by 2 that comes out to be 10 okay. so answer will be 10 in this case and answer will be 2 in this case right now let's see what is the intuition behind this so <coughs> if you if you just see if let me just pick the first example uh, because that will that represents a good array so 1 3 5 2 7 5 right so just see here <laughs> what we need to do we need minimum and maximum element both needs to be present in the array right so we keep a track of the start element right we keep a track of the start element and we keep on traversing the array right so till here we have already find the we have only find the minimum element here also we have already find the minimum element here we see okay our condition is satisfied we we have both the min and the max element till now when we started traversing till this point to the third index we have found out both of them right so that means there is one sub array there is one valid sub array which is ending at the current index right that is ending at the current index right which has one as the minimum element and five as the maximum element let's move forward i come here right so i see neither my min is changing nor neither my max is changing 2 is nor my max is changing 2 is just lies between min and max hence there is one sub array which ends with 2 so that means the first sub array is 1 3 5 the second one is 1 3 5 2 just consider the current element to be the ending element of my sub arrays whatever valid sub arrays i can form right i move to the next element it is 7 now as soon as i get 7 just see here that whatever i have here either min or max that cannot pass participate in any of the sub arrays which are being formed on the right side of this element right so what i mean to say if this is my array right and there are some elements here so if i consider this index so if this index doesn't lie between my min and max uh, it if, if it is less than min or more than max that means this is a boundary and whatever sub arrays are being formed here is not not at all related to the sub arrays that are being formed here right however if this is not the case that means if this is my array and this is an element which lies between min and max and i have some min and max here i have some min and max here that means 
this this element will contribute this element has a possibility to contribute in the sub arrays that are being formed right so uh, that's what just consider it to be boundary right now i come here so as soon as i come here what happens whatever indices i was having for min and max those are reset right those are reset and now i start again i come here i see 5 so till now i have only only found out the maximum element min has not been found and i move forward i see the end of the array so that means there were only two sub arrays that i was able to find right so how to approach it right how to approach it just see here if i again write the example just for one final time it is one three five two seven five so just see here or, or let me take a simple example uh one five one five and suppose my min is one min is one and max is five right so what i need to do and suppose i have an element um, or, or let's first consider this case right this one so just see here what are these valid sub arrays that you can form one and five right one five can you form this sub array as well yes i can form one five one can you form this yes i can form one five one five as well starting from here what are what all you can form you can form five one you can form five one five starting from here you can form one five so one two three four five six six sub arrays can be formed so what we will do is what we will do we'll start traversing the array and we will keep a track of what is the index of the minimum element the last minimum element that i found let's call it min index and i will also keep a track of what is the last max element that i found out right why are we keeping a track of this one so these are two things and one more thing what was the first element that i am considering in my sub array what do i mean by that so i explained here that this is a boundary element right so when you start traversing your array you start with zero that in case uh, in case i have a i have an element here right what do we mean i mean by that like for example if here i would have two like i would have had two so two one five and something like this so that means forming a sub array of two one five was also valid right forming a sub array of two one five one was also valid so i mean to say that since this element is in the range this element can possibly contribute in future to my sub array so what i'll do i'll keep a track of what is the last min element what is the index of the uh, min element the latest min, min element that i saw what is the index of the latest max element that i saw and just in start index this start index means that what is the uh, starting index that you are considering so as soon as you found a boundary your start will be reset to the next element this will become start right this is because we want to count the number of sub arrays right so these are some of the things that we do now when we start traversing the array if this is my array if i start traversing so what happens i need both min and max so if this is my start right and somewhat i found my min element here suppose i found my min element here and i found my max element here so how many sub arrays can we form right forget about this element let's talk about this one forget about this one so this was the first time i found my max element so how many sub arrays can be formed right so the number of sub arrays that can be formed is two why two because one sub array that you can form is this this one and what is the second sub array you can form the second sub array this one you, you can include the start element as well now it is the same case that i explained to you here that if there is an element uh, just before the min or the max which is form which is between the range so that can also possibly contribute in future so that is what we did here so in short can i write it that the number of sub arrays which are ending here the number of valid sub arrays that are ending here is equals to minimum of min index comma max index minus j or here start minus start plus one can i write this why because since i need both the min and max element both min and max i need that so that means i need to pick up the one which uh, occurred uh, at the first position right because ma i got max now when was the time i got min this was the time this was the index right so this is the index so this should always be included in my answer this sub array should always be included in my answer now what extra elements can i include so it is this element and this element so that means this index minus the start index 
right and plus one again because suppose your start index is zero and your mid index is also zero so at least you can form one sub array so that is if you subtract both of them you need to add one as well so that is why you do this thing right so this is how we do and as we keep on traversing if this is my array as we keep on traversing then what happens i update my min index and max uh, index and start so i found my min index here min index here i found my max index here now let's assume i found my max index again here i found my min index here something like this i found a boundary element here right so what i'll do my start was here right? my start was here i keep on traversing right i keep on traversing till here i have not found both of the things so i cannot form any valid sub array i move here i move here i move here okay i have found so i'll increment my answer answer plus equals to minimum of these two min index and this these two you take minimum minus start plus one now what do you do you move forward neither your min is updated nor max is updated you come here okay your max is updated so what do you do you will update your max and again you will add answer is minimum of this value and this value minus start right start doesn't change here now again you move forward you move forward now you find min right so your min is updated so now what will happen what will be your new uh, what are the now new sub arrays that you can form the new sub arrays will be this is the thing that i need to include in every sub array right this is the thing that i need to include in every sub array this these are the latest max and min elements now what are the other valid elements that can be included these are the other valid elements so how many sub arrays can you form that will be max i index minus start plus one simple stuff right so this is how we proceed and obviously in code we can use other stuff as well like for example uh, since since these two start from minus one so whenever you do this operation that find minimum of just a second yeah find minimum of min index comma max index so that could come out to be uh, minus one as well so that uh, that handling is done differently right so yeah this is my code i hope you were able to understand that otherwise uh, i'll i do do mention that in the comments so this is my code we start from line number three answer equals to zero um, and other bunch of other uh, stuff so six seven and eight uh, so min index is minus one max index is minus one start is zero we because we we consider that the first valid element is zero otherwise we'll update it right now what we do on line number 10 if the current element is an invalid element that means it is less than a minimum element or ma more than maximum element then what we do we reset our min index and max index right the as i told you that means it's a boundary element and we update our start that next element will behave as my starting uh, element for the other cases that i'll see right or as well line number 14 what i can do if my current element equals to minimum element you upgrade min index on line number 17 if your current element is equals to the max index then you have uh, max element that you update your max index now you must be seeing that these are if conditions not if else if because it is possible that min and max all these have the same values right so that is why and then finally on line number 20 what i have done answer equals to answer plus mat dot max of zero comma mat dot min of so the second just consider the second part for for now math dot min of min index comma max index minus start the same thing that i told you plus one so this is a value now if this value is less than zero you take the max of zero and this value why why we are taking max because suppose min index and max index are minus one because we are not doing a check now that whether th these are minus one or not so it comes out to be minus one and suppose start is zero so minus one minus zero plus one so again it come it can result into negative values as well so that is why we do this check and finally we return our answer so at every step we are considering the ith index to be the last point of my sub arrays what are the sub arrays that i how many sub arrays can i form with current element being the last element right so this is the approach so yeah i hope you learn something new from this video uh, do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel in case you have any queries do mention that into the comments i'll be more than happy to revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye